An off your pie? No, thanks. Thank God. It would have broken my heart if you'd said yes. All oh, right, well, lucky you. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week I'm finishing the year off on a slightly easier note with the Banoffee Pie from Love Actually, featuring my old anaphylactic shock nemesis, the banana. But we don't have to contend with those yet. First, we have to make dulce de leche, which of course can be store-bought, but if we make it ourselves, we can control the color, flavor, and most importantly, consistency. All we need is a can of sweetened condensed milk whose label we have removed, and which we are going to completely submerge in a water bath. A I said completely submerge in a water bath. There we go, and then we're going to cover this, bring it to a boil, and let it simmer for anywhere from one and a half to three and a half hours. You'll notice that I have two cans boiling here, that's because I'm going to take one out at the one and a half hour mark to show you what a difference time can have on your resulting dulce de leche. So I've got a second can here that I'm going to boil for an additional two hours before gingerly removing and placing on a wire rack to cool completely. And I do mean completely, unless the idea of boiling hot caramel exploding in your face fills you with holiday cheer. And as you can see, the hour and a half version has a nice pale golden color and a drizzleable consistency. Perfect for ice cream or apple cider or foreplay. The three and one half hour version, however, has a deep golden color and a thick spreadable consistency. Perfect for cakes or banoffee pie or foreplay. Then the next thing we have to contend with is the crust, the most popular form of which is graham cracker. But given banoffee pie's United Kingdomian origins, I'm going to follow Mary Berry's recipe and use digestive biscuits, which are almost the same as graham crackers. They're a little heartier and a little sweeter. But of course, if you've seen this show by now, you must have guessed that we're making our own, with a little help of a recipe from Gemma Stafford. Into the bowl of a food processor goes 236 grams of whole wheat flour, 85 grams of powdered sugar, one teaspoon each of kosher salt and baking powder, all of which we're just going to pulse a few times to combine and make sure that everybody's good and homogenous. And then we're going to cube in one stick of cold, unsalted butter, which we're going to pulse together with the dry ingredients, trying not to spray too much all over ourselves, until the butter is completely incorporated and the mixture resembles dry sand, and then we're going to turn it into wet sand by adding one quarter cup of whole milk, then just letting the processor run until a rough ball of dough forms, which we're going to treat almost like a pie dough by wrapping it in plastic wrap and letting it chill in the fridge for 30 minutes, letting the gluten relax and letting the butter firm up. Then all there is left to do is unwrap it, dust it lightly with all-purpose flour, or whole wheat flour if you're really a fiber junkie, then we're going to roll the whole thing out to about a quarter inch thickness, reflowering as necessary, and cutting into rounds. Save your scraps, they can absolutely be re-rolled and recut. And then to give these the authentic look, I got a cookie letter press, which, while it did have the correct font, was a little bit too big, so I ended up having to hyphenate my word. So these are more like digestive biscuits than digestive biscuits. Eh, what are you gonna do? However you word, poke, or score your biscuits, we're going to bake them in a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for 18 to 22 minutes until they are golden brown and crisp, allowing to cool completely and then storing in an oddly perfectly sized airtight container until we're ready to use them, which is right now, because we're making crust with them in the same manner that we would with graham crackers. Pulverizing a handful of digestive biscuits until we are left with about a cup and a half of digestive biscuit crumbs, to which we are going to add one stick of unsalted melted butter, or the fat of your choice pulsing the machine until the mixture resembles very wet sand that you can retrieve with your fingers and press into little pancakes that hold their shape, but not with any conviction. Then we're going to press our digestive biscuit and butter mixture into the bottom of a 9-inch tart pan with a removable bottom, optionally enlisting the help of a wide, shallow ramekin, until the crust is pressed up flush with the sides of the pan and is nice and flat and smooth on the bottom. Then we're going to place this onto a rim baking sheet and bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 7 minutes, until just beginning to turn darker brown and become fragrant. We're then going to allow our digestive biscuit crust to cool completely before even thinking about filling. And then once we're ready to fill, I'm going to heat up our dulce de leche in a shallow water bath that I've brought to a bare simmer, making our previously thick and stubborn dulce de leche thin and spreadable. Then we're just going to spread that evenly to make sure that it covers the bottom of the crust. And then we need to wrap this guy tightly in plastic wrap and let him set for four hours in the fridge. And then finally, it's banana time. I'm just going to take a few precautionary measures here, just in case I'm a little bit more allergic than
than I remember. And then I'm just gonna peel and slice the bananas into maybe half inch rounds. Then after retrieving our newly solidified dulce de leche, it's time to dot it with bananas. Do this however you like, I do not care. There's literally no wrong way you can do this. But what you can do wrong is what I'm about to do. As you can see, I'm very pensively deciding whether or not I should pour the one and one half hour dulce de leche over top of the bananas. I thought it might look pretty and add a nice textural difference. And as you can see, after agonizing over it for a few minutes, I decided to do the wrong thing. And as you'll see later, it ends up turning the banoffee pie into something of a mess. So just skip that step and yours will come out perfect. Now we're just gonna make a quick whipped cream by combining about two cups of heavy cream, two tablespoons of sugar, and a generous dollop of vanilla extract in a large container, using an electric hand mixer to beat it to semi-stiff peaks, so as that it's thick enough to hold its shape, but soft enough to be pleasant to the mouth. And then on top of the banoffee pie it goes, with a decorative sprinkling of cocoa powder. And as I mentioned, as long as you don't try to get too inventive and pour super goopy dulce de leche on top of your bananas, this ought to come out cleanly and perfectly, but even with my mistake, it's still pretty damn good. Now all there is left to do is slice and serve. I recommend you do this with a knife run under hot tap water so as you get nice clean cuts. And as I have made abundantly clear by this point, I am allergic to bananas, so I cannot try this banoffee pie. So I decided to invite my lovely girlfriend Jess in to taste it for me. Ah, babe, this looks great. But look at those bananas, because I don't, I don't really like bananas. Aw, that is cute. It's one of my favorite Christmas movies. It's a chick flick, but it's also a Christmas classic. I think you cried at the end. I think you have a crush on Colin Firth, too. What? Hell yeah. So I decided to invite my lovely girlfriend Jess in to taste it for me. Wow, sweetie, those look great. But wait a minute, are those bananas? You know I don't like bananas. Oh, that's kind of sweet. That's one of my favorite movies. I mean, sure, but it's also a classic. I mean, you cried when we watched it. Also, I remember you saying you had a crush on Colin Firth. <laughs> 